All right, Jeff. Well, it's the day after Vegas, which uh, it's funny because Vegas is so much fun, and we go every summer, and I look forward to it so much. I'm always so glad to be home when it's done. You know, three days is the maximum uh, I think a person, a regular person can survive in Vegas. I once did it for six, uh, and I was borderline suicidal at the end of it. Uh, but it was a good time, um, and uh, it's a weird state to be there, especially over the All-Star break. It's almost like Vegas is like this half dream where you're, you know, just doing all this crazy stuff, drinking a lot, playing poker, and you have the All-Star game or the home run derby vaguely in the background. I did manage to get in a bet between, uh, without missing a big blind. I, I got a bet on the AL and also a parlay that I lost. Um, and there hasn't been much baseball news. I mean, it just, you know, the biogenesis thing is the next thing, but that, as you pointed out on today's radio show, isn't even news. It's just, okay, there will be news in a couple of weeks. So, you know, with that, with that background, I kind of want to turn our attention to football, even though training camp hasn't uh, opened up yet. We at least sure. did have a draft some point in that Vegas trip. I vaguely right. remember. I was Let me make two points about uh, the Vegas, and then we'll move on. Two, ahead, one, you have to get off the strip if you're going to survive any lengthy period of Vegas. You just have to get out of that mindset just for a little bit. Just get out of that area. Go Whether it's go hiking or, like, we go play tennis even just for an hour, just get out of that for a little bit there. So you realize, oh, there's a real world out there. It still exists. And you're not kind of in this la-la land the whole time, too. The trip home is just miserable. I mean, it's not that long. It's three and a half, four hours for me to get home, drive home. But still, the sun's beating down. You know, you're just dead ass tired, and you just, it's just, you're driving right into the sun. You feel like oh, it's just such misery. It's just so, you know, I need that nap when I get home. Unfortunately, unlike you, I get the 15 minute nap. I don't get a two hour nap. I don't get that whole cocoon to hide from there. Yeah, yesterday when I got home, I mean, Sasha was unhappy and all this stuff. We, we went and grabbed some food, got home. And uh, Heather was like feeding Sasha, took her to her neighbor's house, and I just lied down on the couch before I knew it. I was drifting into you know different worlds, and then Sasha mm-hmm. and Heather were walking around. It was just very, very relaxing. Um, and but that I kind of felt like we were drifting into a different world in Vegas for that three days, where there's no sports, and you kind of like lose perspective. It's kind of good actually because it's like yeah. I'm so up on every micro detail of baseball. It's nice to just kind of drift out for a while. But we did somewhere in that dream. For you, I think it was a nightmare, but for me, it was a pleasant dream. Had that uh, Vegas draft uh, that we did, and uh, you know, so let's talk about that. I mean, we, it was a 16-team draft, and I have to say, I've I've been in 16-team drafts because I used to be in the Holly Weird League, on which I filmed a documentary, um, and I like 16 teams. I think it's a, just a great amount of depth where there are actually some choices to be made. Yeah, there are. It's a, it's fantastic. I like that depth, and I like that we added the third receiver spot. So we have a three receivers and a flex. The more starting spots, the better. The, the digger you, uh, the deeper you dig, the better. Not the digger you deep, but the deeper you dig. Um, and I just figures too. Yes, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Quit, quit stealing my line. I'm stealing from the movie. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> but uh, no, I like it. I like that it, it raises the value of each position. Uh, instead of just making this running back, running back, running back, and all that. Although you did go running back, running back, right. running back for your first three picks yeah. after all. Uh, that was more of the circumstance of what it brought you, I think. Uh, I do like that there's a lot of different ways to attack that. Even though I am, as Pete and I like to say, card-carrying members of the uh, wait on the quarterbacks club, I didn't wait on the quarterbacks. I took one in the fourth round. I'm happy with that spot. I'm very content to, uh, with how I built my team. Yeah, you did wait on quarterbacks, but waiting on quarterbacks is different in that league than it is in a normal right. league. I, right. Look, I picked uh, late. I picked 15. So I had the second pick of the fourth round, and I had to take Peyton Manning or Luck, who was the other guy. I, was I had to take a good quarterback because I knew that when it went all the way down and all the way back, there was not going to be a good quarterback left. I mean, I don't know if Eli Manning was there at the end of round uh, five. He might have been. I would have to look it up. But I knew the, you know, the top guys that I really wanted were not going to be there. And so I had to, you know, I had to pick a quarterback. And I, I just knew I took three running backs in a row. I was like, it's time for a quarterback. I know receivers deep. It's not that deep in a 16-team league where you need three of them. I mean, I right. – Britton and Mike Williams are my one and two in the, in the following round. So, you know, you had to suffer somewhere after getting three backs. Um, but it really makes a lot of tough choices, and I like that. I actually enjoy making tough choices. I feel better about them. I'm like, okay, I made the tough choice. I took a third back. I took a quarterback in round four. Um, in the 12-team league, it's almost like – I don't like any of my choices because I didn't. I didn't have any choices. Right. Of course. Exactly. And uh, and they, I mean, I think there there are inflection points in twelve teamers, but they're less severe and they come later. 
You know, I, I, although I guess maybe you're dealing with maybe a tougher first round pick, perhaps maybe that's it. But no, I, I agree. Uh, and you look at just more marginal guys are going to be starting. That's why you're diamond the rough. That's where it really matters when you find them there, because you need someone for that spot. You need someone to start there. I mean, let alone until we wait until bye weeks. My goodness, bye weeks are going to be torturous in this league. <laughs> with the short bench and bye weeks in that league, it's going to be kind of ridiculous. Um, what I like about the 16-team league is that if you find a guy who gets you six or seven touchdowns and eight or 900 yards, that guy's good. He helps yeah. you. You know, he's your third receiver. He's your flex spot. You know, that I have Matt Schaub as my backup quarterback. Normally, I would never have any interest whatsoever in drafting Schaub. Why waste a roster spot on a QB with no upside in a 12-team league when there's going to be five or six or maybe even ten QBs on the waiver wire at any given moment? Uh, but in this league, there's nobody on the waiver wire. And I'm going to need somebody if Peyton Manning gets hurt for a couple weeks or, you know, has his bye week. And Schaub is a guy who has the job. There's no doubt, you know, that it's his team. It's his job. Can't lose playing time. Obviously, he'd get hurt, too. So could anyone. So it's such a weird strategy when you're taking kind of a no, uh, a no upside quarter. I mean, Joe Flacco makes plenty of sense in this league to have on your roster. In a 12-team yeah. league, what's the point? Yeah, I wholeheartedly agree, and I always play it that way. If I, especially in a, in a twelve teamer, when I don't wait until be the one of the last ones to take a quarterback, I say if I get a top five quarterback, I get Cam Newton. Yeah, I'm never going to waste a reserve spot on a backup quarterback because, like you said, you can pick somebody up. The other great thing is now Schaub, he's got trade value because someone else is going to have a quarterback that gets hurt, and you can make that decision. You know, do you want to keep your backup or do you want to trade him and extract some value because you know someone out there is going to need help at some point in time. Quarterbacks get hurt too. Right. So, so, yeah. Some quarterbacks are going to get hurt and or lose their jobs. Now, there is now, in the 16-team league I was in, believe it or not, there was turnover. You know what I mean? Like, there, there, were, guys, there were probably eight or ten guys that are not drafted that end up being quarterbacks and used during the year. Um, and it's shocking that some of the guys who wait on quarterback do end up finding an option. that no, You know, think about Michael Vick in 2010, I want to say. I mean, he wasn't drafted. You know, he right. might have been drafted in a league like this, but he's, you know, Kevin Cobb was a starter. And Vic, who knows? He was coming out of prison. There was no reason to, you know, really think he'd have that much upside. I mean, we knew there was theoretical upside. Um, so he was probably undrafted in a league like this or maybe the last pick. And there, there's lots of guys like that that, you know, a guy like Kirk Cousins could be a significant quarterback if RG3 gets hurt or has a setback. Um, you know, it, it, there's there's guys that will contribute. But, um, but yeah, you're going to draft all 32 quarterbacks, maybe not the Jaguars quarterbacks, but 31 and, and, and see if those guys get picked up. Um, and... The thing about this is there's such a short bench that yeah, when bye weeks come, it's like, you know, you're going to take a zero at tight end or you're going to drop your quarterback. You know what I mean? Like you're your backup quarterback, and that's tough because um, until it gets to about week 10, 11, I don't think I'm dropping my backup quarterback. Right, exactly. The other thing that's going to be interesting too is these first couple of free agent periods. When you draft this early like we did and you have such deep rosters, there's going to be a couple of key free agents and only a couple of them that win jobs. You know, Alfred Morris wasn't drafted last year in this draft because uh, we, you know, why would you draft a seventh round running back that before training camp even starts? You know, someone like that is going to emerge. That means you cannot fall asleep at the wheel when you're making that first uh, that first free agent period, especially if it's before the start of the season. You know what's funny is uh, for my baseball leagues, I did so many really early drafts, like March, first week of March, and um, you know, I had Baroxin in a couple of them, who was the closer before Chapman re, you know, became closer again. And I thought, you know, I really didn't I felt like I had a disadvantage because I really didn't grasp what I thought about baseball until, you know, that last week until Tout Wars and I had the plan, which was such a great idea. Um, but that was that was about then, about like the last week ten, week to ten days before opening day that I really kind of understand what I really thought about the player pool. And I thought, man, you know, Greendell's early drafts in March kind of hurt me, I thought, in baseball. But football, I think it's different because I did the magazine, not you. You right. did the baseball magazine. So, so I was catching up, but I'm caught up. You know what I mean? Like, I know what's going right. on all over the place. So I kind of feel like I'm doing an FFC draft um, on Monday, and, you know, I totally forgot to set my drafting preferences, which I was beside myself when I realized I missed the deadline. I was like, ah, how could I do that? But whatever, I got sixth. and I, I, got a, I think it's third round reversal, but I got to double check. It was last year, I think. But in any event, I mean, like, I'm ready for this. You know what I mean? And I'm glad it could be to my advantage to be early before the market kind of, you know, and I think one guy – that the market, and I draft him in this league, I've drafted him everywhere so far, um, that's going to move up is Michael James. Because the guy is super fast, uh, and um, Jonathan Bales did a study that speed is the number one determinant of running back success. Obviously carries are, but you know, not knowing you know, who's going to get the carries, speed is number one. It's more important than size, more important than almost anything else for a running back. And two, uh, 
Kendall Hunter has a torn Achilles. He's not, you know, he's going to maybe be ready for week one, but even if he is, he's not going to be himself, and he's not that great anyway. And then Frank Gore is really the only obstacle, and Gore, you know, has an injury history. He's had a lot of mileage, and even if he's totally healthy, they're not going to give him more than, like, 220 carries. Right. So, and a good defensive team, and Michael James is explosive. He put on 10 or 15 pounds of muscle, they said, uh, to run better between the tackles. Man, I think that, like, he's going to end up being, like, a fourth, fifth-round pick uh, by the time that uh, drafts roll around. Yeah, you might be right. Uh, you know, I, I think, and you got him, I think, in the seventh round, too. So you right. got a really good price on him. And a 16 teamer. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, and I wrote him up in the magazine. It's similar. I, I really like him a lot, too. I, I just hope he doesn't become that trendy upward guy that, you know, you're, it's going to cost it where he's not really worth it, you know, where it's not worth the price. You know, I don't hope, I don't want to become a fourth or fifth round player because then, you know, it's going to be tough to justify the value there. But, right. uh, but he yeah. He may not be that high, but I think he's a guy that's going to climb, especially in training camp. Yeah, I agree with you there. Uh, so you picked 15th overall out of 16. You know, did you like the spot? I did, given what I ended up getting. Um, I didn't. I didn't really know. I mean, I haven't been in a 16 team league in a while, and so I was sort of agnostic as to the spot. Um, is the stake league 16 teams? By the way, it was 14 or 16 last 14, year. 14, I 16 believe. Last year, I believe it's 14. Last year, okay, it wasn't 16. Well, you know, and that's an option anyway, so it's a little different, but. Um, I hadn't been there in a while, and I remember the greatest season I've ever had in any fantasy sport was picking out of the 15-hole in the 16-team league, by the way, the Hollywood League in 1998. Um, I only got everybody, you know, and, and, and there's obviously a lot of luck there. But you I got think that I kind of like draft it. column. Yeah, it was my perfect well, – well, the perfect draft column, though, is not about getting, as I said, Mike Trout and Miguel Cabrera or, you know, Adrian Peterson. It's about getting, you know, last year getting Alfred Morris with your first pick and everyone being like, what are you doing? You know, getting – Side bets, getting ridiculed, and then crushing the league. That, that's the perfect draft. But again, it's impossible to do that. Um, but uh, no, I, I like it. I, I got LaShawn McCoy, who I thought fell a bit. I know it's not a PPR, but I still like him at 15. Um, you know, what happened? He got hurt last year, you know, but he's healthy now. He's still young and you know, he's still a very good back. Um, and then um, Reese Jones Rue in round two. I kind of surprised myself. I've been taking receivers there, and I was going to take Demarius Thomas, but I just thought, you know what? Stefania Bell says he's healthy. Um, all indications are that he'll probably be ready for the start of training camp, forget about the regular season. And Maurice Jones is the top five back when he's healthy. So um, I thought at the you know two rounds and two picks into round two, I liked it. Yeah, the weird part for you is you know like you said you've been in receivers early in a lot of your mocks and other drafts. You didn't take a receiver until the fifth round in this one with a three receiver lead. Does that scare you at all? No, you know what happened was usually. I've got A.J. Green and Des Bryant at that spot, you know, toward the end of the day. And both those guys were gone, A.J. Green, Des Bryant, obviously Calvin Johnson. I think Julio Jones was gone too. That's right. So there were like four top receivers gone. And I would have to take, you know, Damaris Thomas is probably my next and Brandon Marshall if I wanted receivers. So it was a little bit of a step down. And then I thought, you know, running backs are more scarce, but I like the Lamar Millers and, you know, I don't mind Le'Veon Bells and stuff like that. And I didn't know if those guys would even be there. In round right. three, in the fifteen, in the sixteen team league, at pick fifteen, so I couldn't just take those receivers and count on running backs being there like I can in a twelve team league. Right. So what I did was I took you know the two backs and I thought okay there'll be receivers there, uh, but then Le'Veon Bell was still there anyway and I thought you know what there's a flex in this league running backs just so scarce I'll take either Hakeem Nix or Le'Veon Bell and Hakeem Nix on a pick or two before me I said all right I'll take Bell, and then I was like uh oh I have to take a quarterback now even though I'd like to take a receiver because. They're all going to go in this round, I can tell. It's 16 teams, a long long time before I pick again, so I took Peyton Manning. And then it was just sort of like, okay, now it's time to see what's left in receivers. All right. You and Peter Shanky pretty much did the exact opposite draft. He went receiver, 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 and was the last to take a quarterback, even after others had already taken their backup, which I loved, that they punished him. Oh, so yeah. we're, we're both proponents of the punishment draft method. So oh, yeah, I'm absolutely. See that happen. Especially when it's Pete Shanky. Yeah, you know, exactly. Exactly. Shanky will do that receiver thing. I don't care if there's a study – you know, I don't care if there's a study done by, like, you know, every, you know, established scientist on the planet that you shouldn't draft wide receivers first. He will still draft wide receivers first. <laughs> He's unshakable right. in that belief. No amount of evidence will sway him. Well, we'll just have to, we'll have to provide another data point this season for him. Right. Uh, who did you end up with at receiver? Um, I ended up with Mike Williams as my number one, which I'm not, you know, not uh, the... Uh, Seattle slash Detroit one, but the uh, Tampa one. Right. And I'm fine with that. I mean, I, you know, Vincent Jackson gets hurt sometimes, and I think Mike Williams has shown that he can produce anyway. And, um, you know, they don't really have a viable tight end. Uh, they, you know, they have Doug Martin as, a, as one back that's early. They don't have, like, a, a major third receiver. I mean, that, you know, he, 
that's it. It's Williams, Jackson, and Doug Martin. I mean, the passing game doesn't spread it around that much. So uh, I feel pretty good about that. Then I got Kenny Britt in the next round, which is obviously a gamble, but one with plenty of upside. Um, and then after getting the Michael James, I took Darius Hayward Bay, who I like. I took Rod Streeter, who in my mind, he's big, he's fast. Um, he, you know, Daenerys Moore is not very durable. The Raiders' defense is probably going to be bad. I think Streeter has some sleeper potential. I also took DeAndre Hopkins uh, in Houston because I think Andre Johnson is also very injured. Yeah, it's disappointing when you took Hopkins. I, w- I was looking at him. I wanted him, at, I think, around the spot that you got him. Um, I, I started off with two receivers early on, second and third round. I went Jordy Nelson and then Vincent Jackson. Same sort of reasoning. You know, I like Jackson a lot. Main game in town. You know, he's big enough. He's, he gets a lot of goal line targets. I, I'm happy with him there. Uh, but, you know, I waited for my third receiver, so I'm going to have to kind of scramble a little bit for those guys a little bit. Uh, we'll see. Who, but, is, who uh, is your third receiver? Right now, it's Ruben Randall, but he's like one of many. I've got Randall, I've got Kendall Wright, i got Donald Jones and Jacoby Ford. I'm hoping just one of those guys pans out that I can use on a regular basis. But you know what? There will be a receiver or two that went undrafted that, that someone's going to go grab. I remember, you know, Brandon Lloyd was a pickup in every league the year he went off. Oh, yeah, there'll be receivers on the way where I mean, it'll be tough because there's 16 teams competing for a much smaller. That's uh, the part that's tough, yeah. Yeah, like, like group. But the thing is, the, the small benches, I think, definitely make more available. Uh, and, you know, there are a lot of receivers that, that get action. I think Ruben Randall has plenty of upside, though. I mean, you know, Knicks and Cruz, first of all, the Giants, you know, they don't throw a lot to their running backs historically. I mean, Bradshaw got some catches. You know, maybe Dave Wilson, if he can block, gets those. We don't even know. The tight end, Brandon Myers, could be a factor. It could be a big factor. Or he could just be the standard guy that Eli throws 500 yards, five touchdowns to. It depends. You know, I don't know how they're going to use him. He certainly was good in Oakland, but that was kind of a desperate situation and a desperate team with a lot of injured receivers. And then you got, you know, Cruz and Knicks are going to get their targets. But if the Giants throw a lot and they're not throwing to the backs that much and the tight end just kind of has an average role, receiver three is going to be pretty valuable. And he's the clear number three this year. And Knicks always gets hurt too. And, and Randall looked like, you know, he was he was a high round. I think a second round pick and has some size and some decent speed. I think Randall has upside. Yeah, I think so too. I think he can make some plays. So yeah, I'll be rooting for that to happen. Um, so what was your best pick? What was your worst pick in this draft? Um, I you know I I gotta say like McCoy at fifteen is obvious, but it was it seems like a good pick. Um, and I love the Michael James and I, I thought Manning was at the right. I had to do it, but it wasn't a great value. Worst pick. Um. I don't really dislike any of my picks. There's probably someone like Streeter or someone in there, DeAndre Hopkins, where maybe Kobe Fleener was available. I don't think so. I was trying to target him, and he, and he yeah. someone else got him. I, I basically have Jordan Cameron as my tight end with my last pick, and that's probably not – there's probably some one of my picks I should have passed on and instead taken a tight end earlier. Well, yeah, but, you know, as we always say, in a league like this, something has to give. I took Dennis Pitt in the fifth round, and I like him a lot. I think he's going to get a ton of targets now. It's not a PPR, though. So right. maybe that's a reason to kind of tone down the enthusiasm just a little bit. But that cost me, you know, a third receiver or, you know, a slightly better second running back. I'm happy with the way I constructed my team, though, all things considered, especially in the nature of this draft. So I think it should be all right. It should be a good team. I'll finish last, I'm sure. Yeah, no, you'll finish, like, fifth to last, I think. It's not that oh, thanks. No, I actually, I actually liked your draft. You got some guys like Andre Brown. I, I liked Pitt a little bit where you got him. I liked Andre Brown a lot. Um, and I like some of the other guys that you got late. Uh, I thought they were good values, particularly the running backs. I will say, though, did you get? were you the one that got Alex Smith also? I did. Yeah, I like that pick, too. I think he could be big on the Chiefs. We talked about that. Um, I will say that if you're going to, in a 16-team league punt position, tight end is the best one. I don't think people can really afford to hold two tight ends unless they have one star and someone else really emerges, and they're going to try to trade them. Tight end is a position where there will be more than 16 guys who could get you a touchdown or 70 yards in any given week and they will be on the waiver wire. I think tight end is a good position to punt. There's a whole lot of guys that are capable of scoring two t- uh, touchdowns on the waiver wire and then getting no catches the next week, though, too. Right. It, it's the nature of the beast. Yeah. And I'm, you know, by taking a tight end early, I'm hoping people deal with that hell a little bit. So we'll see. But if Pitta gets hurt, then I'll be right there with them. 